Okay, guys, what's up? Um, got a quick video today, some kind of short, but it's still going to be a uh, how to video. Uh, so basically, what we're going to do today is we're going to make what's in front of you, and these are kill poles. Now, I went on Facebook and I asked around because I really want to put out a new video. I want something that's kind of easy to build, some, uh, but some a lot of people want to do. Next, if people want to see either a, uh, a video on how to make your snare supports or how to make your kill poles, and I got basically a 50 50 response. But I was pulling some kill poles I had out in the field. They've been out for like the last year and a half just sitting out there. I went and pulled them. So I was like, well, I got these right here. So I'm going to go ahead and do the kill pole video. Because nobody on YouTube has done anything on... Uh, well, take that back. Um, uh, Clint Lockler, he did a video explaining how they work and everything. But uh, nobody has really just put together a video on you know how to do it with some welding. So that's all I'm doing. Um... For you guys who don't know what a kill pole is, um, a kill pole is a snaring tool uh, made out of it. It's a lot of people argue what a kill pole should be, what a kill pole is, um, but the most common one and the one we're going to make, uh, these originated in Iowa, I think, by Ron Hansen, and he was snaring coon with them. And the whole idea was to have a entanglement system, a staking system, and a support system. All in one so you have your truck loaded with these you get out you're in a cornfield or whatever and basically you have everything you need right here you don't have to go running around uh, trying to find a tangle stick or some you have the truck you see a um see we're in our yard my yard right here there's no entanglement there's nothing for them to wrap up on so uh you use something like a kill pole or if you're in a cornfield like they were an owl you would slam this in Hammer it into the ground, put your snare on it. You don't have to have a separate uh, support system because your support wire is already on here. Nine gauge uh, annealed support wire. Just flip your snare on, adjust your loop, and you're down the trail. And from my understanding, the way a lot of guys up there use them, they'll have uh, they'll have theirs about three foot tall, and they'll go and pre-stake these out ahead of time maybe a week or two before season and they'll put two to a trail or whatever and come time uh season head out they go to these trails that they already had these out on and they'll go ahead and they'll, all they have to do is just pull their snares out slip a snare on or just a loop and go on down the trail and that's basically what it is now these can be used for beaver coon um coyotes Basically anything. Heck, you can use it for wild hog if you use the material large enough. Now that being said, these are a specialty, more or less item. Okay, you don't need to use these in every, every snaring situation. Um, if I'm in hardwoods like this, real thick stuff I'm in, there's really not much reason for me to really need this. If I just run a ten foot snare, he's going to, you know, make one loop. And he's going to wrap up around something else. That'll just be more weight. If I'm walking. A line if I'm walking like a mile long snare line there's no need of me carrying like 40 of these doggone things there's, there's just no need for it unless I'm in a situation where there's just no entanglement then in that case I could go put them out before season or whatever but again these are a um, specialty deal so um, there's a lot of ways to make them as you see this is kind of my this is my first iteration it's half inch rebar as you see, it's been in the ground for about two years now. And it's still perfectly fine. Number nine wire, I got a chain link on the side of my snare loop slips over. This is a smaller one. This would be more of what, you know, them coon guys were using. It has a washer welded on the bottom for an anti-spin. Number nine wire, and it's got this, this is the classic loop formation. So I can clip right here with a D-ring or whatever, running my snare. And it can't spin around so he'll get uh, choked up. It's got that um, angle cut at the bottom so it goes in easier. But it is a vers it can be a versatile system, but it's also more of a specialized system. If you don't need to uh, entangle your animals, then there's really no need to use this. If you're going to be setting these by a walking trail or something for some unknown reason, uh, you don't want that because he's going to wrap up right there by the trail. Um... Another example of what these are good for. Um, around here, a lot of people, a lot of the coyotes and stuff will use cow trails. 
Well, the farmers have their whole area set up in grids, basically, where they'll lock one, one area out, and they'll lock the cows out of that area, and they'll let the cows into another area. So that area that they locked out, the trails are still there, and the cows are still traveling, but the cows aren't in there. You can have these. You can just go in there and tell the guy what's going on, and you can just set these by all them dogs on trails, by every one of them. They're neat. No, there doesn't need to be any snares on any of them until he locks those cows out. When he locks those cows out, you can just go in there and, you know, just set your snares, and that coyote's going to be used to these by now. He's going to run down there, get caught, and if it's anything like how we are out here, there's no entanglement. He's going to tangle up on that uh, kill pole, and he dead. But again, that might not be what um, you particularly need. That might not be something that rolls into what you want to do. But first style of system. So anyway, enough of my jibber jabber. Uh, we're going to get over here in the little metal working area on the front porch. And we're going to make a couple of these up. Well, we're going to make one of them up. We're going to make an average classic coyote style one up. And uh, show you how to do it real quick. So let's get on over here and do this. Okay, guys. So here we are on the front porch. My metal working front porch. <laughs> I honestly really need a shot. But hey. Uh, we're going to make it work. Uh, I just want to show you what we're going to really need as far as tools. Uh, we don't really need much to make a kill pole. Uh, there's lots of ways to make it, as I showed. Uh, the way we're going to make it, this is really all we're going to need. You're going to need yourself a welder. Um, I'm actually not using my regular flux core. I'm using my uh, new one. This is a Frawny Easy Weld 100 ST stick welder. And it is a great little welder. It was like a, what, 230 bucks at uh, Tractor Supply. Wonderful little welder, runs off of 110 power, and I honestly feel, as a trapper, if you want to do your own mods and stuff, having this and that little $90 one, you would that little $90 flux core, you would be pretty set. It can run, it's supposed to be able to run up to a 1 8 rod in some, uh, some types, but I've only been using 332nd. It runs 332nd, uh, 6011 uh, like a boss. Uh, runs... 332nd, uh, 7018, wonderfully, 6013, pretty good, um, and I think I've tried some 7014, I can't quite remember though, but so far, all of the 332nd diameter rods, it runs it pretty well, um, it goes to 80 amps, I'm, I'm running off of a 20 foot extension cord, and so far it's been welding, uh, all these 5H drags I've been making, uh, here's an example of some I just finished up, I'm not the best welder here, but, it welds them up pretty good, penetrates wonderfully. And again, a lot of that depends on the rod and whatnot, but you know, blah blah blah. Also has a DC function. I mean, a DC TIG function, which I don't have set up yet. But wonderful little welder, and I, I'm starting to highly recommend it. Um, you're also gonna need your uh, welding mask, of course. Uh, don't weld with your eyes open trying to use a pair of sunglasses. That's gonna blind you. Uh, you're going to definitely need some kind of support wire. Now, to deal with kill poles or uh, your support stands or whatever you're making for snaring, try and make it universal. If you're going to be, know for a fact, you're going to, you generally use a whammy, uh, a snare collar or whatever y'all want to call it, that fits only 9-gauge wire, use 9-gauge wire for your kill poles and your snare supports. If you use 11-gauge, use 11-gauge. If you use 14-gauge, use 14-gauge. You know, it's common sense, but... Uh, we're going to need some of that, whatever support wire you want. Uh, depending on how big you make your kill pole or whatever, that's going to depend on how much you need. But I have, I'm just going to use a three foot piece because we're going to use most of them. If it's too long, we can always just wrap it up more on the kill pole if, or we can just cut it if we want it to. I would rather have more support wire than I need than have not enough. That's just my view on it. Um, you're going to need something... A, to make our loop with uh some a broom handle an old piece of broom handle would be great i'm just going to use the handle of this little uh hammer right here a uh, piece of pipe work we'll need some washers if you want to do the anti-spin you don't have to but if you're in looser ground um a washer would really help with your anti-spin so these are just uh what are these uh two and a half inch washers you ain't got to be nothing special. Try and get kind of the thicker ones. Some of you use to make a pogo anchor. You can use that or, you know, a piece of flat steel, whatever. 
Um, you need that. Maybe two or three vice grips and a pair of bolt cutters. And of course, your uh, since we're using the stick welder right now, your electrodes. We also have a chop saw. And we're also going to need our kill pole making material. Now, I want to comment on that real quick. Um, from reading, I've read a lot of sources about how to make kill poles and whatever. Uh, the main two being kill pole, the kill pole karma thread on Trapper Man. I'm not sure if that's still up. I'll try and link it in the description if it is. Um, and Craig O'Gorman's uh, snaring update for Hoofbeats of Warfare. He has probably the best, um, not explanation, but really in-depth, detailed yeah, explanation for what a kill pole is, who made it. And if you guys can, I highly recommend y'all get it. Um, I was going somewhere with that, but okay. But, uh, they were talking about what type of, uh, rebar to use. Now, the common census is, for making something for coon, beaver, fox, bobcat, and, you know, stuff like that, you want to use half-inch rebar about four foot tall. And that depends. I made mine four and a half, and I got some that are three foot. Because those animals aren't super strong. They're not going to really bend it. For coyotes, you want it five foot tall because coyotes are a lot taller and they'll be able to uh, whip stuff around. But you're going to want to use a five eighths diameter because I've seen a lot of pictures on that kill pole karma thread before it got deleted or whatever because I can't find it right now, but I will try. Um, LT Grape, who was the main dude doing it, he had a lot of pictures of his half inch kill poles being bent. You know, the coyotes would get caught. They'll still choke out or whatever, but they would bend them over. So, unless you want to be straining a lot of kill poles, we're going to use the 5 8 And another thing they talked about was the bar grade. The bar grade being um, something that has to do with like the metallurgy of the bar. If you go to a pretty good distributor, you should be able to ask for what bar grade the rebar is. And apparently what you want, the best one you want, is a 60 bar grade. Uh, some with the lesser bar grade, some about they will uh, crystallize when you weld them and they possibly might shatter in cold wet. Something about like that. But so far, um, I've seen that kind of as a, uh, I want to say a mute point, but I haven't really seen a lot of people who really use kill poles really complain about that too much. Uh, Craig talked about it in his book, but again, Craig is, he is really, if y'all have read Cuff Beats of a Wolf or his Fox book, y'all know Craig is very, very, very anal about what he does. So, again, uh, coyotes, about four to five foot tall, and um, five eighths rebar, preferably 60 bar, everything else, half inch. Um, I, and for wolves, I, I don't even, I have no clue. I really don't. I would just use a freaking T-post or something. But, um, with that being said, let's start cutting some stuff up, and let's weld it up real quick. I think I've jibber-jabbed enough. So, let's turn around, uh, put our protection on. Uh, you guys are going to, I'm going to hear in the comments, but I'm not going to be wearing actual welding gloves. I'm going to be wearing these uh, leather work gloves. Um, it's very hard to find welding gloves in my size, and I just don't like dealing with it. I'm also not going to be wel welding, wearing, sorry, I can't English right now. I'm not going to be wearing my usual welding uh, uh, shirt or whatever. I'm only going to be doing like three little tack welds, so I just didn't feel it was that necessary. And uh, we are going to be wearing iPro though. Make sure we wear iPro at all times in our welding mask. So uh, let's turn around and start cutting. Okay, so a little pro tip right here is uh, driving these in the ground. If you cut them all straight, it's going to be a pain in the butt. So once you cut one end straight, go ahead and uh, if you have the option on your chop saw or if you're just using an angle rounder, once you cut the top end straight, go ahead and cut the bottom end at a uh, 45 degree angle or 38 degree angle or something to give it a little kind of edge. That's going to make it a lot easier driving in. So. So we got our pole uh, 
cut out and again I really shouldn't have not cut it five foot to begin with because it was gonna be a pain in the butt to uh, get on camera and everything so let's cut down to about that's about three and a half foot right there uh, or more about four foot uh, the guys who use a lot of these are actually pretty tall guys I'm five foot even and that pole was like right on the top of my head so uh, I'll probably have to use a pole so digger to drive it but a lot of them guys are like uh, six foot five who use them so uh, now just use whatever uh, works for you so now we're gonna mm, get this in the yeah there we go so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna clamp in our vise like we were sticking in the ground. This is going to make it easier for us to weld. Go ahead and put our ground clamp on there. Now we're going to take our piece of number nine wire here. And that's how we're going to do our, uh, our wire formation. Take your pair of vice grips. Take your number nine wire and about a couple inches from the top or a foot from the top, depending on how, how you make it. And there's no real exacts about this. Do do what works for you. Or just clamp it. Okay. Now we're going to tack weld here. We're going to tack weld right here real quick. And for what we're using, I'm using a for electro wise. I'm using a seventy. I mean, it's 6011. I don't know why I was saying 70. Burn that one in real good. I'm gonna come down here and burn it in pretty good. Okay, cool. Let that well cool down a little bit. That's not like about those 60, uh, the 6011s. They have a nice, it's not hard to restart them at all. Unclamp it. We're going to take this wire, we're going to give it a few wraps. right here so it's a little easier make sure y'all see what I'm doing here so we're going to wrap answer twice I'm going to do three wraps just to be safe. And then I'm going to weld. Well, actually, you don't have to weld right there. You can, but we're not going to. I just thought about it. You really don't need to. Once we're doing a couple wraps, what we're going to do is we're going to take our hammer or our dowel or whatever, and we're just going to use that to make our little doohickey here. Make our little loop so we can attach our uh, clip. Should fasten that down a little better. Right. Go around it. And then we're going to do a few more wraps. And again, guys, this is the quote unquote classic way to do it. tack well this right here at bottom in there we're just going to zap it in there real quick make sure you're going to tack well make sure you're not weakening that support wire too much but at the same time make sure you got a good weld that's going to hold
Uh, the reason we need these wraps is those wraps kind of take a little bit of stress off of this loop and it gives a little more strength apparently. So that's why we wrapped it. So that is where we would clip in, have a D-clip that goes to our snare, or have uh, whatever. Now that's the original way they did it. Now, well technically the original way they did it, they did some way where they um, drilled through it and used a cotter pin or something, but this is the original improved way, I guess we would call it. Um, now, if you want to skip all this, you can just clamp your wire down, give it a few wraps and zap it, and then have like a a lock washer or a nut. I've seen uh, ADC off of Trapper Man. He has a wonderful uh, kill pole design where he just uses a nut and he slips his uh, pigtail up through it and it wraps down and it pulls like that. That'll work great. But again, we're just doing the um, quote unquote original way to do it. Okay? So now we got that done. Go ahead and kind of chip the flux real quick just to make. Uh, Sure my welds don't like complete and total crap. I'm gonna bend that down. And we're gonna flip it around. Now, if we leave it the way it is, with the rebar the way it is, it doesn't spin, especially in hard ground, very much um, on the first or second animal. But once you start piling up animals on this, um, it's going to want to wallow out, and you're not going to get your entanglement effect as well because you're just going to be able to spin it, and it can possibly pop it out. So the way we're going to help alleviate the spinning is we're going to take one of them washers we had. These ain't the biggest washers. If you're trying to use these in like a creek bottom for beaver or something, and you really don't want them to spin, you might have to get like a 3-inch fender washer or something. But that would be hard to drive in another ground. But uh, again, it kind of depends on where you're at. We're just going to take this here washer, use our vice grips to clamp it to the side. I'm going to, oh, let's go about a foot from the bottom here. Readjust those vice grips real quick. Now what we're going to do is we're going to just melt this in to this uh, piece of rebar. Because this is going to be taking a lot of shock when we bang it in the ground and stuff. So I forgot to, whoo, forgot to put my dog on ground clamp in guys. Y'all can tell I ain't, a, I ain't been welding for 30 years. All right, now let's try it. There we go, that's going to be our anti-spin device. When that goes in the ground, that's going to have to be walled out a lot more until it wants to uh, spin out. Okay guys, so here we go. This is our uh, kill pole. Again, this is not, you know, a full-size kill pole. It could be. Um, if you're in hard ground, I guess this will work. Uh, this will definitely be more than enough for coon or fox it being 5 eighths. But again, for coyotes, apparently you want them a lot taller. Now, this is what our well configuration looks like. Again, again, this is this is like the real basic way that's supposed to be done. I forgot to show you the bottom. Okay. This is like the uh, classical way to do it. And there's a lot of different other ways to do it. You can do it with... Uh, 
you know, as I said, if you go on Trapper Man and you look at some of ADC's old posts, he just uses a, uh, he just uses a nut. Just welds a, uh, it's probably like a big half inch nut, like right here. And he just wraps his, uh, he just welds the support wire right there. Um, I've seen different other guys, they, uh, have a, a piece of your support wire. I'll, I'll use a support wire and a piece of rebar. And it's just, uh, they let a piece come out like this. And they weld up like here, and then it comes out, and then it comes out like that. And the way they use their snare, they slip it over in that little piece, catches it, and then wraps up on it. Again, this is a uh, kill pose. There's a lot of different ways to do it. And uh, But one thing that a lot of people agree on with these kill poles is um, paint them. Uh, for both protecting them and hiding them from people, because um, if you're using these on public land or whatever... Uh, you know, down by the rivers or whatever, people have no clue what the hell they are. Unless you're a trapper, you're not going to think, hey, that's used to kill animals, you know. But, again, painting them just helps, because if you put some natural colors in on them, it, it just looks like a piece of wood. You, you bend your fork wire down, no one's going to notice what it is. The cow might rub up against it, uh, but really the most you have to worry about is, is, is if you have these in like a field or something, the farmer runs over it. Uh, so, we're going to spray paint it real quick. I just have uh, some Rust-Oleum. I'm using these uh, camouflage colors, and these are like a real olive drab type, um, real uh, um, low sheen type color. And they blend in fabulously. I paint my snares with them. And you're going to use a different color for whatever. I especially like getting down here. Give it up. Few blasts of green. And again, a lot of people say this isn't necessary. And if you're setting these out ahead of time, like you set these out in the summer on those cow trails or whatever, like I was talking about, the animals are going to get used to them. They're not going to think they're anything. Especially if you're in farm country where there's fence posts in, driven, driven in all the time. I highly doubt an animal is going to be like, hey, that's, you know whatever um i hear a lot of people all the time talk about how animals are scared to smell of metal and those same people go and snare under a fence I, they'll use a metal snare on under in a crawl under under a metal fence under barbed wire fence it's like i, I don't I, that kind of logic never really fit with me but then again i never catch anything so you know i'm just a guy who builds stuff because nobody else wants to. So you just line them up and and uh, spray paint them real quick. Uh, Craig O'Gorman, he talked about he'll get a big piece of PVC pipe with a cap on both ends. He'll fill up with um, some kind of metal primer. And he'll do two or three shakes and roll them, that, or roll them around a little bit and haul them out. Uh, that's what he did. And he has pictures. He has like hundreds of these things in his front yard in his book. So uh, here's that. Yeah, once this... This is really good spray paint after about a day or so, especially in my weather. I can't smell it. Um, you can go ahead and put these out. You know, find you a trail you want. Again, specialty. These are a specialty item. Um, I would not use kill poles somewhere like around um, a lot of public land I have around here. There's coon hunters everywhere with their dogs. I wouldn't use a kill pole with dogs. I wouldn't use a kill pole around... Um, Heck, I really want to use a kill a snare of any type of any type of livestock whatsoever. That's just asking for trouble. Um, I would definitely not use a kill pole in a state where, you know, you're only supposed to use cable strengths. So you're not supposed to, you know, kill your animals. So definitely don't use them there. But if you have just like you guys up in Iowa or in Nebraska or somewhere where it's just grass fields everywhere and there's no place for you to really get in. You know, a uh, a uh, entangling situation, and you don't want to have a separate system for everything. Like you don't want to have a uh, have to carry a stake driver. You don't want to carry um. You don't want to carry your uh, snare support. You want all in one system. This might be something good for you. And if those trails are like, you know, there all the time, you can just leave these in here all year. Catch your two coon, leave them alone for about a week, come back, reset it. That might be an option for you. But again, guys, I'm not an expert trapper. I'm not going to be the guy who, 
you know, I don't catch much at all. I didn't catch anything this year because I barely set. Um, all this stuff I've done right here, you can go look it up for yourselves if you don't believe me. Um, it's all, it's all in, in the internet. It's all in, you can order hoof beats and get a snare. It's all in there. All I'm doing is just showing you guys how it's done. You know, how it's uh, put together. And, uh, actually, yeah, the paint's about dry now. That was quick. Have a real close look at it. During the off season, if you don't want to pull all these out during the off season, if it's legal in your state, just leave them like that. Right next to your trail, nobody will think anything. They probably think there's like for surveying or something. Um, season comes back in, poke them out, put your uh, support in. But, you know, got a little anti spin here. Again, you might need to use something a little bigger. Got a little angle cut to help it get drove in better. Got our little uh, area so we can clip our snare to. There you go. Again, multiple ways to do this. This is just the way we are. Um, uh, this is just the way I've had people. I've act, Again, I asked about this on Facebook, but I also have had people ask me to make a video on this for a good long time. So, finally went ahead and did it. Grab a fuel pole snare here from the old one. One way to hook it, that'll just slip through there. Again, these will be out ahead of the season. You just walk by down the trail, put your snare on. There you go. That took a whole 10 seconds, so. So, yeah. There you go, guys. Um. You know, I hope that gave y'all an idea. I hope that explains some stuff to y'all. Um, hope I hope I didn't jibber jab too much. Uh, if y'all y'all want to help uh, support me in the channel, help me get stuff like uh, more material to do stuff like this. The link to my Patreon will be in the description. It's like I don't know, like I forgot. I think it's like two bucks a month now to support me. The automatically takes it out. So literally that two dollar soda you get at the gas station or whatever, you probably won't even notice it. I, I do five bucks to like two different, who is it, Meat Trapper. I do his uh, Patreon. I don't even know this one gets out. Um, if you guys don't, cool. If you want to, I appreciate it. Um, I keep saying I'm going to put stuff on there just for the Patreon guys, but uh, just haven't been around to it. So, yeah. Uh, there you go. So, I'll uh, probably do the snare supports next, and then hopefully after that we might be able to get a cage video up. But I'm going to be starting school again, so I hope this is something nice. So, uh, y'all take it easy.